Hi Phil, thank you for joining us at Blue Note. It's a frequent complaint of businesses and individuals that it just takes too long to receive the money that they've transferred. The recently forged new payments platform is seeking to change that. Can you tell us a little bit about how it came to be and what that means for businesses and the speed of transfers? Sure. Well, it's a couple of years ago, the Payment Systems Board, which is a group that's supported by the Reserve Bank, came out with a challenge to the industry to um, develop some payments uh, changes to the infrastructure that would enable a few things to happen. And one of them was uh, a target to have a real-time uh, payments platform brought in by, I think the initial target was 2016. So what was uh, launched um, this month uh, is effectively the industry's response to that. Uh, we've now got 12 institutions signed up who have committed to building a real-time payments platform that will mean that payments literally will happen in real time. What does this mean for Australian businesses in a practical sense? Well, it'll open up a lot of things um, over time. Initially, um, it's probable that the payments, real-time payments will be initiated by individuals, but that will open up um, the possibility for payments and sales to be linked. So, um, for example, we could have a customer who makes a payment uh, and it's cleared immediately, which gives the store or the, the merchant the comfort to be able to release the goods knowing that the payments have been made. So there's a whole range of ways in which this could work, but it, it's that instantaneous speed and the uh, confirmation that a payment's been made that's going to change the way business is done. Is there a trade-off between speed of transfer and security of transfer? There is, of course, and you know, one of the things that when you're building these types of systems that adds a lot to the complexity of it is the need to manage all of the fraud and theft risk that um, new any payment system is, is exposed to. So this is going to be an expensive piece of work for everyone involved and a big part of that expense is making sure that we've got state-of-the-art fraud control. One of the benefits is the special overlay that's provided on top of the basic infrastructure that will allow banks to innovate and pro provide additional services. What are some of those services that ANZ might be providing? Well, we haven't um, settled on what those services might be, but if I can just speak hypothetically, um, for example, um, you know, if you imagine in, um, an example where somebody's selling a car, you know, you, you don't want the person walking away with the car until you know that they've paid. And today we use something as archaic as a bank check to achieve that. Obviously, a confirmed real-time payment done electronically is a much better way of that, uh, that being done. Um, and then that transfer, of course, could carry information. So it might carry the detail of the documentation of the vehicle um, as part of it. Now, one of the things that the, uh, the group that brought this together um, worked on was the idea that we can't imagine every possible use. What we should do is build a system that's open to a whole range of uses. Um, payments that might be made rel relating to people's superannuation accounts will carry additional information about their super. People that um, it may well be used for payroll, in which case a pay slip might accompany the, the actual payment. So the ability to add information is just one of the additional features that I think will give this a whole range of different uses in the, in the future. Is Australia playing catch up in this regard or is it leading the charge in the evolution of payments? There's only a, a handful of countries uh, around the west of the world who've uh, made this move to a real-time payments environment. So it would be fair to describe Australia as a fast follower in this regard. Uh, Singapore have a fast payments environment. The UK moved to a faster payments uh, process a, a couple of years ago. There's a couple of other European economies that have got this, but this is definitely keeping Australia at the forefront of payments developments worldwide, and that's where we've been in a whole range of other areas as well. And from a bank's perspective, does it improve the position of a bank in dealing with threats in the digital space? Well, I think it does. Um, I think it gives the banks that are uh, part of this process a real edge because, you know, when you are able to offer to your customers the ability for a payment to go through in real time with immediate confirmation. You know, we're meeting a need that other, other players in the industry will just struggle to, struggle to keep up with. And I made the comment at the launch event the other day that the greatest way that any bank uh, can deal with the threat of new entrants is by getting out and meeting the needs of its customers first. And that's what we're trying to do through this process. The infrastructure that's required to engage in this system is obviously quite significant. Does this not just prove in another example how important it is to keep up with continual evolution? Oh, it absolutely does. And um, we know that our business is very you know, technology dependent. Uh, we're always looking out there, so we've invested a lot in things like digital and mobile technologies. And this is another example whereby being at the forefront of the development of movements to real time, you know, we're demonstrating that we are trying to stay up there with the very best in our industry 
uh, not just in Australia but worldwide. And I think we're very well placed. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you.